Hey, welcome to uh, Helping Others. This is my podcast, and uh, once again, I have Jonathan Guajardo with me. How you doing? Good to be back here, like we said we were going to do. <laughs> yeah, we said we'd come back. We said we'd talk about things, um, and, uh, and so here we are. We are at the end of our semester, and uh, it went pretty well. I think it went pretty well. Was, I mean, you know, dis- despite everything that we- could have happened... Yeah. Very well. Well, and and what was weird is that I'm trying to think of how to say this because I'm not, I don't want to come across as arrogant, which is, I think that's when you come across <laughs> as arrogant when, is when you say it's that. prefaced yeah. with that, so, yeah. so no one well, thinks it. <laughs> we got really good student reviews. Yeah, and that was yeah. that was weird for us because uh, we didn't feel like we did as good of a job teaching this semester. And at the same time, we felt like we did what we could. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know if that makes sense to you all. Given but like, all the... Yeah, yeah, like overall, taking into consideration all the courses that we've taught in the past, we felt like we were pretty limited online um, with what we could execute. But evidently, we we did well enough because we got pretty good reviews. Yeah, and I, I think that's something to think about, like, especially with teaching online, you know, um, I've heard from a lot of people like they don't feel like they're really reaching that mark that they want to reach, but it's it, I mean uh, but the, yet the students love the way, the way they're teaching and they're giving them good reviews and stuff and yeah and you know I, I think everyone kind of knows that that this is a whole different ball game yeah you know and that uh, and that and that we are you know doing the best we can and we're, and we're trying to accommodate yeah. everyone and uh, I you know I just had to constantly keep reminding myself of that like yeah. because I would get. Like, I mean, there were a couple of fully defeated moments where it was like, I realized, like, I can't, we just can't do that because we have to be in person. And, uh, and we don't have enough protocol in place to meet safely in person. But um, other than that, though, like, I did have, I mean, there were some moments when I was teaching that I was like, whoa, like, uh, one time I was teaching my music class and... Um, Everybody was super quiet, and I thought they had all tuned out. And I said, I know I'm lecturing a lot. I'm sorry about that. And somebody, like, unmuted and was like, me and my three roommates have been listening to you this whole time and love what you're talking about. And everybody, like, on the chat hit up and said, yeah, we're, we're totally listening. And I was like, wow, this is really different. Because, you know, at least for me, and I don't know if you did this, but I didn't require cameras on. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't yeah, require that. I, I, I just felt like, you know, in terms of, like, mental space for people, um, I don't know. It just didn't feel like something I like. I felt like it's just it's more distracting to try and get people to have their cameras on and more negative energy than it would be to have everybody with their cameras on and people kind of uh, faking it or having to be upset. Yeah. Uh, while on. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I could be wrong, though. You no, know? Uh, I, I, I agree with that, too. Yeah. Like if, if you're forcing them to have their camera on, I feel like y- you're you're gonna get yes I mean they're gonna be there right but yeah. you're, you're gonna lose part of the you know I, I mean well and that's because of the way yeah, we teach too is that is. we want people to be who they are and one of the things I would do is I would talk about why we don't have our cameras on or why we do and and you know kind of what we think about that and the other thing I did and I know you did as well and other colleagues of ours was uh, doing check-ins with the students like yeah. throughout the semester just kind of going like hey like how is this course feeling you know what do you think that kind of stuff yeah and um that i know that really helped them especially like if i asked them about like the course load or um how you know the the mechanics of what we were doing versus other classes and 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 any tweaks we could make they not only did they like being able to give input but they liked being heard if that makes sense yeah uh you know i i I think i guess in regards to the camera on thing, you yeah. know, like if someone's camera is on, it means they they're they're generally just they want to contribute at yeah. that class, you know. And I noticed that, and so like I feel like requiring it to be on, you're you're kind of forcing everyone to do it, and so those who would have it on anyway, they kind of feel less likely to, uh, to contribute. Also, I don't know. I I feel like that was a thing, and I definitely with my. My whole setup, my Zoom setup, you know, and getting getting both of our Zoom setups together was kind of a journey <laughs> this semester. Yeah, it was interesting because, you know, before this semester, you and I, you know, we had taught online. Yeah, we had. Um, yeah. I don't think we had done as much synchronous as no. what it was. And so we had uh, been recording and just popping out our content, 
whereas now we were doing live Zoom sessions. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, we we went through these crazy like uh, deep dives on production equipment. I put out some videos. Uh, you got some crazy equipment. You ended up getting a uh, S. What is it? SB7 or what is it? Which one? The mic, the shirt. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 so I got a shirt sure SMB7. Yeah. Yeah, SMB7. SMB, there we yeah. go. There we go. And that was a uh, that's a legit microphone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but you learned something. I, I, learn? I learned a lot from it. It needs it needs a lot of power. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it needs a lot of power. And um, so I ended up getting a preamp for it as well, um, as, as well as my mixer, of course. And um, I think you recommended the tube preamp to, uh, I got, which was an ART. Yeah, the ART. And it, it, it worked really, really well. Uh, and has this nice warm tone, but it takes a lot to get it, get it going. So yeah. um, it, it's definitely been a journey in building out these systems. But, you know, and then, of course, I try to make my background as, as, as interactive as possible. Yeah. So I have like uh, some some records in the background. I change the record of the day out, and I kind of have this like thing with the students. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Record of the day, and then and, and, the, and the students will be like, "Oh, what's the record of the day?" And I'll be like, well, "Today it's Take Care by Drake." And let's talk about why this is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. audio production aspect of it and stuff. You know. That's cool. So, That's cool. Uh, I mean, there's so many ways you can you can make it like engaging and interactive, and uh, I know you did a lot of that too. Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I definitely was like, this is, you know, I live in a one-bedroom apartment with my wife and my kid. My kid is in the living room here, and this is our kitchen table that I'm at. You know, and I would turn, I'd get the webcam, and turn, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'd turn it and show, like, where I work out, and, you know, the TV, and everything's integrated. The kitchen's right behind the camera, uh, all because this is all one room, and, um, and so I was just very real with people about... It, and then I also uh, I talked a lot about um, mental health and I talked about exercising. I had like one student that was a trainer in my like 8 a.m. class and that was really fun because um, I think it kind of just set a tone that you know there's a, a huge array of people that work out for different reasons and whether it's like you have physical goals or you have like health goals or you have uh, like for me it's mental health health goals so it's like I exercise to keep myself uh, like mentally uh, uh, going I have I get a lot of anxiety and stuff and when I work out like it really drops it I know you picked up some exercise yeah equipment. yeah I, I definitely got an exercising as well and you know I I had a gym membership before this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I live pretty close to a Gold's. Yeah. And, and, so, and so I used to work out there. Um, and and it just get the exercise going, especially like, I mean, during this time, you, you want to do something. Yeah. You're not, yeah. You're not, you're, we're, not, we're not walking the campus every day. We're not, we're not doing that, you know. Yeah, I was busting out like um, 10,000 steps. Yeah. When I was on campus a day. Easily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easily. And so it went to zero. <laughs> you know, and, and so we weren't doing any more of that. And so. Um, I had always wanted to get in a, in a, in a pull-ups, and I really like to do them, pull-ups and, uh, and chin-ups and everything else, you know. Uh, I always really enjoyed that aspect, so I got this, like, little pull-up bar. Yeah. And I just began doing it and, and, and going on it. And uh, I'm not going to lie, like, like, that thing is fun. Like, I, like, like, I'll just be, you know, sometimes I'll just be there grading, and I'll be, I'll be doing them in the background. <laughs> and I'm just, like, you know, watching it, and, you know, you know uh, I don't know. It kind of passes the time a little bit, and it keeps your, your cardio going, and... I don't know. It's something to do, and it may, you know, when you're sitting in the same room all day, or when you're, you know, in front of a camera all day, it it, it kind of tires you out, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's exactly why I work out. So, yeah. I mean, it, it was one of those things that just. Uh, I even got weights and started moving this office chair out of the way, and while I was grading, I was like lifting weights, and um, stretching, and like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> As I would like watch uh, uh, speeches, um, you know, I would like I have my keyboard literally right here, and I would just take my notes, and I'd just watch while I work out and just grade, and you know, I mean, like, I don't know. It, it, I'm an extroverted person. John is an extroverted person, but it's kind of like power super stations when yeah. you when you kind of have to be at home <laughs> yeah. 24/7. It's just, I mean, it's it's very different in terms of you miss that social interaction, yeah. but you also miss the physicality of just going out and yeah, yeah. and being in a, in a place like, like like even going to to a coffee shop to work has its own special you know thing yeah, to yeah. it, you know. Yeah, and we definitely like shied away from that. Yeah, we did. Um, I don't. 
I mean, we've gone to a coffee shop outside. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. But we haven't really gone inside. But we've seen students do it. Uh, yeah. They're brave. They're brave. Yeah, yeah. They'll they'll do it, <laughs> and they'll go work, and you know, and and, and it's it, they get their work yeah, done. Yeah, we, we definitely saw uh, students uh, try a lot of different things. Yes. And we were like, I don't know if that's COVID <laughs> safe, but you know, is it COVID uh, safe? I don't know. It. It was what it was. Yeah. Um, you know, we tried to be as safe as possible too. We had some scares. I mean, there was nothing. Uh, it's not like we're immune to to the run in with COVID. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. And then we uh, we got to work with a group of students on showing trajectory. Yeah, and that was really fun and super unique and just something that uh, we, we we've been talking about doing for a while. I think yeah. in the last video we talked about it. Yeah, we're know. gonna do this. Um, this talk series uh, where we get people that have graduated or that we've taught in the past to uh, give examples of like the work that they've done and then talk about like their lived reality of, of finding a career and then also find people that are already deep in their career to talk about what it's like to kind of go from PhD to you know full tenure track uh, associate professor or and beyond and man, we were able to to garner some great talks. We had three nights, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we had three really unique different talks. Yeah, yeah, and a bunch of a bunch of the different speakers. Yeah, so one uh, was about academia. The other one was about like community engagement and action based research, mm -hmm. and then the other was about like um, minority representations in in new media and media production so that was uh terry and josh yeah you know? th three entirely different spaces and uh you know different discussions and but i think you know i think i think that uh, in the end like it just kind of it all um it, it, all it, was, it was what we were yeah. going for that's what yeah, we were going we, for we uh ended up building a website yeah and we ended up uh creating a facebook page We'll put this all in the description mm -hmm. and a YouTube channel. So you know, if you don't have Facebook, you can you can still watch the videos. And um, when we say we, like the students, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the we, students. So uh, it was um, Anthony Ramirez. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Valentina. It was uh, Marco. Marco and uh, Alondra, mm -hmm. and then us. And next semester, uh, we're gonna have like uh, even more people helping and developing out this uh, project and initiative. We, um, we were, you know, one thing we did do because of kind of like our backgrounds is that, yeah. especially with Johnny, Johnny has been running a golf show, yeah. I guess, for three years. The, go the golf show has been, I think it's almost five years at this point. Five years? I think it's almost wow. five years, yeah. Uh, and this is the first year we've done it online, I mean, on Zoom. Yeah. You know, we, we've always shot it in person in a studio and then, you know, done it right. that way. So he had been uh, doing it on Zoom. And then using OBS, which is this software that allows you to do broadcasting. It's like, I mean, tons of people are using it at this point. For all sorts um, of things, yeah. too. Like, like you can use it for, for Twitch, for gaming. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it. So um, we kind of took the model from the golf show and applied it to showing trajectories, which are two totally different shows. <laughs> um, but we took the technological bones of it. Yes, and, yes. And just um, repurposed it. <laughs> repurposed it. And, uh, and so we were able to have really cool graphics and uh, Johnny was able to do the switching. We have a like a little two minute behind the scenes uh, video that we shot. We'll we'll put a link to that as well. Yeah, kind of showing how we did that. And um, and the students loved it. They learned a lot. We got to kind of show mm -hmm. them how it all worked and uh, kind of how to <clears throat> efficiently create you know Zoom experiences, which turns out is a job now it, yeah that's that's a complete job Can you talk about that yeah yeah like um so uh, i've done a few zoom consulting jobs and and you know I, i've been involved in others uh you know in producing live streams and stuff like this and the the amount of of work that's out there for for you know interacting with people on zoom for making sure people have the right setup the right lighting it's out there like people are doing it like, like yeah there, you there, said there was are, another woman that yeah was, yeah was it, like, 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 there are there are definitely people, um, and, and and this one lady I met, uh, was it who, who 
specialize in making sure people's Zoom setups are good, making sure they have adequate lighting, mm -hmm. making sure that they're set up right and that the audio sounds good, the, there's proper light on them, you know, yeah. it, even things that we talk about in our classes, yeah. like, you know, like making sure, you know, if there's no light behind, I mean, if there's light behind you, like you have light in front there's of you. There's a fill light. Yeah. You know, there's a fill light, which we have right there. Yeah, you know? yeah, like we have a, a fluorescent, or no, actually, LED looking, yeah. uh, or a fluorescent, fluorescent looking LED light. <laughs> facing us and, so it works uh, and we have lights you know yeah light behind us but but i mean the, the the suggestions could be as simple as go in front of a window and just yeah. you know, turn around but make sure nothing is like you know behind or you i think or even uh, another simple one you talked about was um being in landscape versus, yeah being in landscape versus so that's, that's a big one that's something to think about especially yeah. on zoom because if not then you know and and we've had to do that for the golf show because a lot of guests will come on and they'll be in portrait and uh, and it's gotten to the point where i, I don't have to tell them anymore yeah. but the host of the show will be like all right, landscape, make sure your lighting's good. And so yeah. he's learned the whole regiment too, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it, that show has gone from almost being canceled. Like, we almost canceled it yeah. um, when COVID hit because they're like, we can't do it anymore, you know? Uh, because we shot at the University of Incarnate Word and they wouldn't let us shoot there anymore uh, because of COVID. Um, so we were like, all right, well, and they were like, let's, let's cancel it. And I'm like, what if, we, what, what if we just do it on Zoom and I just use OBS? And, and they were like, that doesn't sound right. We can't do that. And let's try it a few times. And then we tried it. And they're like, wow, let's keep doing this forever. We love this. <laughs> yeah, and so um, so we transferred that over to the tech part, uh, to showing trajectory. And mm -hmm. what was also, not, I mean, like we said, we recorded them, we uploaded them to YouTube. We also Facebook Live mm -hmm. streamed them. And so the Facebook Live streaming went really well. We didn't know how that was going to turn out. You know, a lot of times um, people are very uh, Zoom- what I mean, there's probably a lingo term for this now, but but like a Zoom room conscious, have a Zoom room conscience. So it's like <laughs> how many people are currently in the Zoom room is like who they feel their audience is, mm -hmm. or sometimes like they may even have like a Facebook Live number conscience where oh there's only six people watching or there's only you know ten people watching, not realizing that there's people coming and going, and and uh, and and. Um, the engagement changes over the length of the of the stream. So uh, when it all came, when it was all said and done, we had hundreds of views yeah. uh, for all of them, um, and uh, it ended up going very well. and And in terms of engagement, we were able to look at the finite numbers, you know, on the back end of the Facebook stream, let alone the Zoom session. And uh, and it turned out, you know, we probably had like forty to fifty people that watched you know the whole thing mm -hmm. um which would be like a stellar audience at least for us um for for the talk series that we've put on in the past uh that would be like a pretty good turnout yeah you know and i think going through this process in general has kind of made us rethink what it what, what engagement means what engagement looks like right and, and everyone's on there uh people the people who are watching at that one time then of course you have the replay and everyone's watching the replays and so those right. numbers go up and then you get different comments coming in and the way you interact with the audience uh, and in many ways, I you know I I feel like there's more um, not incentive, but it's easier to interact in this format than than it would be if, if you're at a oh yeah uh, if you're if you're at an, if you're at this lecture you know I mean having to raise your hand get up in front of an audience is a very big thing you know uh, but just posting a comment on Facebook and having the ability for us to register these comments which may not have come in if we had done yeah, it in person and, and that was another thing uh, in the video the little two minute video that we're going to put in the uh, description is that we show how we have a team that actually is fielding all the social media questions in and then uh, uh, in a back channel uh, um, in a group me we were sending that all the questions and, and comments to the people uh, to the MCs to the to the uh, uh, people that are um, hosting you know the event and uh, and that that worked really well actually that did yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh, the, the, that whole process worked very well and uh, you know it, it was something that the students really got behind you know and you know w with their help we were able to put this on but if everything even as far as the website to creating the graphics yeah. to like I mean I mean they really took the initiative on it and it was just amazing to, to watch that happen and then watch you and I kind of facilitate this and, and, and go through this this whole process it was really interesting yeah, and I don't, um, I don't know if you saw this because I think Marco just contacted me directly, but he uh, uploaded uh, the first of many um, like short clips, like highlights from the talks uh, to YouTube. And so we're going to start having those where it's kind of nice. just like not sound bites because sound bites sounds like 30 seconds to a minute. I mean, these are like kind of more like a, a, 
Like Jerry Joe, clips. Yeah, Jerry <laughs> clips, like yeah. Joe Rogan clips, where it's like four minutes to ten, maybe even fifteen minutes, yeah. out of an hour and a half long uh, discussion. And uh, so yeah, so that went really well. Um, you know, we also uh, uh, our courses, like we said, they went really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I I had students have to write papers, and I had them all do blogs. And man, they did some some great work. I saw some of those. I, yeah, those yeah, were really good. I've, I've obtained permission to. Um, to show them from the students, and uh, I'm really excited about that. We, uh, Johnny and I, and we'll probably uh, wrangle Jaffe in mm-hmm. to uh, kind of have a, a summary of our semester in blog form on the CM Collective, like we've done in the past, and highlight some of the projects that people did in our classes that we kind of feel exude what we're going for, which is uh, a pretty simple uh, objective, which is people to create things that they're passionate about and uh, show them at like kind of like at a high level yeah uh, entertaining level yeah we're definitely going to try to put those together um you know uh so i teach social media as well uh which is a very large class and so i, th- I think uh, before everything even started we walked to the classroom it's like this 300 person auditorium you know it's huge uh, the actual class is about 110 people, so they figured if every single student came to class one day, yeah. which, I mean, they don't have to, you know, I mean, they can, they can do it on Zoom, um, you know, but uh, if every single student came, there'd be enough space, you know, for everyone to spread out. Um, but I, I eventually, like, you know, most of the students did do that on Zoom, and yeah. I, had a, I had a few who came in the classroom also, and um, that dynamic was so interesting, you know, you know, talking to people on Zoom, talking to people in the classroom, and then them interacting and hearing the interactions between the students on Zoom and the students in person, and, and having that go back and forth in different environments, in different cities, in different places, uh, but having that, envi- that, that, that take place, and then seeing different perspectives on stuff, especially this past semester was interesting for social media because we had the election, you know, and so, yeah. and so we had all this political discourse going on, and people could, could really talk about that you know, both uh, in person and, on, and online and talk about the changes that they see in social media, trends that they're seeing happening. And um, that, that, I mean, that, that's a, it's a really good time to teach social media for doing an election. You know, I think it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I had, uh, I did not teach in person. So I taught all online, whether it was synchronous or asynchronous. Uh, Johnny had to teach in person, and um, and it was definitely a different dynamic. All the pe- all the colleagues that we talked with, that were teaching uh, in person, had a very dynamic experience. Where y'all, I, I think the trend, and I could be wrong, correct me, was that you know you started off with like twenty to maybe thirty percent of the class in in the classroom, mm-hmm. and by the end of the semester, I I'm pretty sure everybody had like five to zero students. It would trickle left. down hard like that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely. I mean that that that's what happened. And you know, I was actually okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, like again, like this is more an observation, not yeah. really a comment, like like a critique. Um, it was to me what I got out of that as someone that's like really into pedagogy and student based learning. Like student-centered learning was that this wasn't an ideal situation for them. We need to tweak something to make it yeah. worthwhile for them to be there physically. Yeah. And uh, for me, like the the light bulb that goes off over my head is is that they need interaction when they're there. You know, they need to interact. And that's something. And so we yeah. have to figure that out. And something as different. the vaccine comes out, maybe we'll be able to get closer to each other. But you know, I think if we're going to be in person for something. Something has to be at stake in terms of interaction. Yeah, no, I agree with that. In order for people to feel like they're getting something out of the presence, rather, I could just, if you're gonna lecture the whole the the whole time, I could have just sat and listened. Yeah, and checked it out. You know, um, I've had some students. You know, I have some funny stories about Zoom. You know, like uh, like someone will have their camera off the entire time yeah and then all of a sudden they'll chime in and they'll be going through the wendy's drive through or yeah, something yeah, yeah. And, and, they'll be like, and they'll be like hey i'll have a number two by the way i just want to say what say uh, i have something to say about this lecture and they'll go off on this thing and talk about uh, about what about, about uh, the point we're, we're all making you know and someone else will chime in and they'll be like in bed yeah. you know and, and, I'll, and i'm like you know i'm actually okay with that in many ways i'm like yeah. i'm like they are contributing they're doing what you want them to do you yeah. know i mean yeah 
sure that they're doing other things, but 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 I mean, they're at the end of the day, they're listening and they're learning. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking for engagement. That's exactly what. Yeah, that's what we, that's what we so want. So if you're you know waking up in bed or you're half asleep in bed but engaging, I would prefer that to you sitting in my classroom unengaged on your phone. Exactly. You know, just kind of tuned into another world. Yeah. So um, it's it's like if, they, if if they're in class listening to a podcast or something, yeah. right? Uh, you know, they're, they're doing something else while, while listening to that, and their attention is mainly on that. Yeah. In this case, I felt like a lot of students listened to the class like like it was a podcast or something, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we were that that, yeah. that thing that's that's distracting them from other things, which now, is I, good. I will say, you know, I had some guest lectures, and that went well. Oh yeah, yeah. I felt like the guest lectures. I know you went had well a couple too. too. Yeah. And it seemed like it went well. I mean, I had people come and give talks, and. Um, uh, uh, you know, I had Sandy come and talk my my mentor in in my music class, and that That's was legit. amazing. Yeah. The students were just in awe. You know, um, I think it was on a Tuesday that she spoke, and on the Thursday class, we talked for for like thirty minutes because they wanted to just kind of keep keep going through that. So, but yeah, no, we this semester, I you know, my big takeaway was um, pace things out. You know, there was a point where I got burnt out. Um, it was. Well, it was around my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I had some other stuff come up that, like, accelerated how I was in my stress level. And it wasn't because of my birthday. It just happened on that day. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I was really I was really stressed out. Um, I was asked to get involved with a lawsuit. And I was like, no, I'm good. But uh, but it was really stressful to, um, to navigate that. And it brought up a bunch of things that had to do with the, the passing of uh, my student, Johnny's friend, Cameron. Um, which actually, you know, it was really interesting because during that time, I, you know, I really kind of explored a lot. And by the time I was back to 100%, you know, we pretty much had gotten to the point of the week before, you know, Cameron's vigil. Um, you know, because my, well, my birthday was like the 18th and his vigil was like the 6th of December. So, you know. Um, so by that point, Johnny and I were, were queued up for the vigil because we lead it. Uh, mm-hmm. Some people may or may not know that. One of my best students was shot and killed by police. Johnny was student pres- body president at the time at the University of Incarnate Word, Cameron Reedus. And um, every year since he passed away, even you know when he passed away, we've held a vigil uh, on, his, uh, on the day he passed away. And, uh, and so this year was really interesting. And because we had done showing trajectories, um, we were able to put together what I felt like was a really good uh, uh, vigil online. Yep. It ended up being a Zoom session. Uh, I went over to Johnny's house. Uh, we set up the chimney and I made a fire and mm-hmm. Johnny you know, work the, the battle station, the Zoom stream, Facebook Live. Another Zoom operation or yeah. uh, OBS Zoom yeah, combo, yeah. Facebook Live thing. And I have to say, you know, it was so late in the semester. This was classes were already done. Um, it was a pretty reflective Zoom point to us that it was, you know, we had gotten so comfortable with the technology at that point that we yeah. really were able to focus on the vigil, which was interesting uh, to kind of say is that like, um, we were able to see people from all over the country come to this vigil uh, in the in the chat um, in the Zoom session, and then uh, we the Zoom session went so well that we had even kind of gotten so no pun intended zoomed in to, to the discussion and to the reflection that my wife texted me and was like, "Hey, you know, um, just so you know, read the comments from Facebook," and we hadn't even really thought of it. No. So I told Johnny, you know, I, I messaged him and I said, hey, check out the, the Facebook um, uh, comments. And at the, around that time, uh, Cameron's mom was kind of, uh, she, she didn't sound disappointed, but she was just kind of like, so this is how many people are in the Zoom session, you know? And we're like, yes. We're like, but you know, there's a big Facebook uh, viewing and there's some comments. And so Johnny ended up reading like, Three literal minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of comments, a whole yeah. bunch. And it ended up having like 600 views that night mm-hmm. and has gone on to have probably almost a thousand views at this point. And, uh, and their, you know, his parents were just blown away. They were really touched. We were really touched. I yeah. mean, it was like, it was just so different because normally the way we had done a vigil was we would go to this tree on campus and there would be like 
I don't know, 10 to 20 of us. Yeah, it, it, it'd be a smaller group, you know. Right. And, and it's, it's very nice doing that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, um, and uh, this way, which was different, you know, it's, it's very yeah. different. And to be honest, I, I think if we do the, the tree again, we, we should still have a live yeah, aspect. Yeah, we're going to live stream next year. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that was, uh, uh, to get real, that was a mm -hmm. reflective time, but but also a technical triumph. Definitely, definitely, yeah. We felt good about that, not going to lie. And, uh, and yeah, and then... You know, I think um, overall, I would say the theme that kept coming up for me was just mental health. Um, you know, I, I markedly saw my colleagues and my students just have a hard time this semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, energy would go down. It's People a, would get burnt out. It's just, I mean, it's a very difficult time, you know, yeah. and, and it's especially for a lot of students who want that in-person in experience or who miss the you know the, the quote-unquote college experience of coming yeah. of coming to campus and of you know having this interaction with their peers and you know I mean that's something that I liked a lot when I was in, in university yeah, and I, mean, I know you I did college, you know yeah. so I mean, that's why I went yeah <laughs> period. Like if I, yeah if I, I think if I had only been able to do online I would have just been like nah, nah, I'm uh, good. I probably would have failed out because yeah. I just like wouldn't have cared um, the other part was the fact, but the faculty also had that. They did. They yeah. also like we had many faculty that mm -hmm. just they wanted to be on campus. Not like they were like going on campus, but they wanted to be able to have that natural interaction again, be able to build rapport, mm -hmm. be able to like have engagement with students uh, in a traditional manner. And um, and while I mean I think you and I adapted pretty well. I mean yeah. we, I did. I don't know how many office hours, how many yeah, emails, uh, text messaging, the digital going interaction, back and forth. Was, yeah, a mm -hmm. huge amount of, of interaction to build that rapport. Like um, we actually, you know, we had a class that accidentally got a little, a little technologically <laughs> uh, sidetracked. Sidetracked, uh, both of us, and um, and it made it a huge challenge. And uh, you know I. I I just told the students outright and, and Johnny told his students outright we we're like hey look like we're having some technical difficulties with this uh, you know canvas the management system we were using and um, there are some errors and we haven't been able to fix them all and so you know we're gonna work with you all like yeah not in any way think that y'all did anything wrong um, we just this is just something we have to work with. We've never used this system before. And I think that's a very big takeaway in in, in this class, but in terms of all yeah. classes, is being flexible. You know. Yeah, and upfront that, with the students. Yeah, I think paid off. Being very upfront with them and being like, "Hey, look, this thing's and not our working." Admin, yeah, we told them that we were. Oh, having definitely. Too, yeah. And they were very supportive and helpful. Yeah. You know, and so I mean that was great. Um, you know, um, th th this was my first semester teaching the class that I created. You know, the entrepreneurship class, and. Um, you know, having to teach it because when I, when I developed it, it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be an in-person class, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so having to do it fully online, you know, I mean, not fully online uh, because it was it was mostly. I mean, it was half in person, half online. But you know, you know, as we mentioned, at the end of the semester, that number goes down a lot. Um, so uh, ha having to do this course online and and, and mm -hmm. having to, having to go through that and modify all your projects and all of your, um, you know, all, all of your exercises that you want to do with them to fit that format. And then kind of explain to them, look, this was this was designed this way, but we're gonna everything's gonna be fine. You're gonna get a good experience out of it. You know, I'm gonna do my best. And if you have any any sort of issues or any hangups on your end, anything that you're concerned about, uh, let us know. Yeah, I constantly did that. Like yeah. I would I would send out, hey, this is what we fixed. If it doesn't appear that way, just let me know. Um, you know, we're making mistakes. We just yeah. are. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's just. It's and, uh, an, it's a part of it. And the, and what ended up happening was I had quality work turned in. Mm -hmm. Um, for the for that was uh, our speech class, and I have great speeches turned in. So, yeah, you know it, it worked out, and they were uh, very supportive too. Because I mean I felt bad, but um, but yeah, that's that was our semester was a lot. So uh, so to kind of like uh, uh, turn the corner. So, you know, what are your predictions for twenty twenty one? Where where do you see it? Like, well, how do you see us uh, uh, getting back? You know, uh, so my prediction, you know. I really hope we can get back to in person at some point, but I I think this has changed the landscape forever. Yeah, I, I think this has definitely changed the landscape, and I think you know using the tools that we have that we've learned from this, um, using that to kind of you know supplement our classes, right? Augment, I, I, yeah. I, you know, to augment it, yeah. And I I feel like we're not going to lose this live streaming portion of it. I feel like that's, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. keep going, you know. And so students who can't make it for whatever reason, you know, yes, they're sick and. 
And you know, as you and I both know, we're both a little germaphobic. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, 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 Even sure. before this, if we had a student come to class with the yeah, flu we or something, we'd be like, no, go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think we'll still be that way. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, but like, now they have an option. If they're not feeling well, they can go on Zoom <laughs> Yeah, and, or something, and, I feel like. And, I'm, and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm slated for all online again. I know you're slated for in-person and online. Yeah, right? I think I'm doing four in-person, one online. Okay, so mostly in-person. Mostly in-person for me. Um, I, you know, what I'm going to try and push for is excuse me having some kind of at least once a month some kind of socially distanced meetup Mm -hmm. where people are getting to interact in at least some way and like the reason i'm being so ominous about it is that yeah we've got to work this out we've Mm -hmm. got to talk back and forth we've got to check with our administration but like i want to come up with some ways for students to either do some production work um you know, I had a, a, a ACK Lab meeting last week. Yeah. And um, one of my former students, Jason uh, Wynn, you know, he mm-hmm. he's talking about like, oh, yeah, well, this week I was on uh, a Curb Your Enthusiasm, mm-hmm. you know, and I was sh- uh, shooting there. I was like, oh, were you like a PA? He was like, no, I was an actor. I was like, oh, okay. So it's like they're doing work. Yeah. Like well, they're still out there shooting. And so everything's still getting done. So I want to kind of really safely uh, go over, you know, their protocols and what they're doing and at least have like three to five sessions next semester where we meet up in person Mm -hmm. and go over some production things go over uh like things that we could only do in person yeah exactly uh but no 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 in person like lecture series we'll probably do that still online yeah i I, I would prefer to especially for right now yeah. yeah yeah for right now but yeah that's my prediction prediction for the spring is that I think well, we should, you know, make an effort that when we are meeting in person to make it worthwhile, and, um, and that's hard both for the student. I think oh, well, I think it's going to be hard for both the student and the faculty at this point mm-hmm. because we have gotten used to using Zoom and just going to do this thing. It's like, how are we gonna make that? Because to me, the intangibles of college at this point is social interaction, is new, is mm-hmm. developing. It's not just going and taking tests and and, and giving answers or writing papers and and having them be modeled it's like you know then the 21st century worker is going to have to have analytical skills is going to have to be able to to create tools create solutions um, that go beyond kind of what traditionally we've seen as a liberal arts education Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's like a lot of the liberal arts creative part, you know, and, and, that, and also moving into fine arts is, is an intangible in and of itself when you go into the workplace to be able to, to know theory and to know history so you don't repeat it and be able to abstract that out into what you're doing at, at work. Yeah. You know, it plays a role. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, and, you know, I feel like one thing that's really emerged during all this has been problem solving abilities right because like you know when when all of a sudden something happens and you, you have to shift and you got to pivot right knowing that you have someone who can solve these problems and i, I think that's it's going to be what employers are looking for in, in, you know in years to come you know uh, if something comes up you know you want someone who's versatile not someone who just knows a lot about one thing but who knows about multiple things and, and kind of fit uh in that category of i mean what, what do we what do they say the jack of all trades the media yeah. jack of all yeah, trades yeah. you know yeah, they used to say the jack of all trades is a master of none. And I think, you know, oftentimes I agree with that for uh, like engineering or extreme like computer science uh, spaces where maybe you're trying to figure out like finite things. Mm-hmm. But in a, in a communications field like that, I think they call that the glue, you know, it's yeah. like you're like the glue. You're, you're someone that's that's constantly code switching and changing things up so that people of different fields and different organizations can be uh, put into a conduit through you and, and your organization to uh, better communicate and, and get ideas across. So, Exactly. Anyways, we just wanted to do an update. We hope uh, y'all enjoyed it. And uh, I don't know, you have any last words? No, that's about it. Stay safe. Have a good, uh, good happy holiday. And? And gig them. That's what I, I figured. Thanks I, and gig <laughs> I figured you'd do that, and I'll be like, hook them horn. <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> everybody will hate me. But um, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs>
So anyways, uh, we hope you all have a, a great holiday, and uh, we'll be back in the spring. We'll do yeah. some more of these, so y'all take it easy. See y'all.